Hey folks, it's Nate, and today I'm just kind of tinkering around in the garage, sort of trying to improve my craft. And I had a little thing that I received, or a couple things that I received, that I want to show you guys, which you're going to see, see more of on the channel, because they're really nice and really cool. So stay tuned if you want to find out what that is, and if you want to learn a little bit about how I'm improving my own process at welding with my Clark welder. So stick around. <laughs> No, the channel is not currently sponsored by Miller. A fan reached out to me. He's, if I remember correctly, he's a salesperson for Miller. He works with their safety equipment and whatnot. And he asked me, do you need anything for the channel? And the first thing I asked him for, Miller makes a very low profile respirator that you can fit over your mouth and nose, and it fits underneath a welding hood really well. I've wanted one for about eight months now, but with a global pandemic where everyone's worried about what they're breathing, you can imagine, respirators are hard to find. He says they're sold out of them, and they have been for quite a while. And he doesn't know when they're going to be getting any more in. So, I left it at that. He reached out to me again a couple weeks ago, and said, Hey, I'm going to send you some stuff. And I thought, okay, whatever you want to send is fine. I gave him my address, and this is what he sent me. So, check it out. We got some, I think these are called multifunction Miller gloves. They're really nice, soft leather. These are going to look dirty as hell in no time, I guarantee, because they're white. But they're really comfy. They're insulated. I think these will be great. I've been looking for a pair of gloves that I can work in and do my tack welds and stuff that I can protect my hands with uh, without having to wear bigger, bulkier gloves. Then he sent me two pairs of, basically, welding gloves. These are a thinner pair, sort of all-around MIG gloves, right? And a thicker pair. Of course, all of them are blue because it's Miller. All of these gloves are super comfy. Uh, the, the palms on all of them are well made. Arc Armor is what these say. Oh, these are the same deal, Arc Armor. So I guess they're just two, two versions of their you know, full length gloves. So these things are nice. I can't wait to start using them. Same with these. These are going to protect my hands really well and that's cool. The other thing he sent me, and this one was totally unexpected, but he also sent me this. First of all there's this hood in here, which I believe is a heat or fire resistant hood. So there you go. I can look like a knight from uh, Monty Python. Or, you know, I can protect my skin while I'm welding. But the other thing that's in this bag is a Miller koozie. And this cool little welding mask. Check it out. Goes with the hood. I feel like a stormtrooper, guys. I also tried it with my I also tried it with the respirator that I did end up buying, which is a 3M respirator that has these big disc-sized uh, filters on it. It fits underneath this. This thing is pretty cool. It's got an auto-darkening lens to it and an LCD screen on the side that lets you set things like the sensitivity and the, and the darkness. And it looks kind of neat. So it's really low profile, right? So it's easier to sort of get into places with it. So that's cool. It's going to be a nice addition. So. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. I don't want to call out the subscriber who sent this to me because, you know, privacy and whatnot. But uh, thank you very much. You know who you are. Awesome. I very much appreciate this. All right, so welding on the Internet. Everybody's got opinions. Everyone wants to critique how you weld. I have never claimed to be a professional welder. In fact, I am 100% a self-taught welder. I got this Clark welder way back in the early 2000s. I did quite a bit of welding with it right after I got it, and then life happened, and it kind of sat in a corner in my shop and got dusty for a while. I did a lot of research into how to weld then. Some of that got dusty and rusty <laughs> in the years between, and then when I picked it back up again, I seemed to have forgotten some of the techniques that I had learned way back at the beginning. Having made the bumper and starting doing more fabricating on this channel, uh, I got reminded of a lot of the mistakes that I made as a beginner that I'm making again now. And I'm going to try to show you some of those mistakes, and I'm going to try to show you my own process of trying to fix them. So for anyone who's ever been curious, this is the machine that I do all my welds with currently. It's a Clark 180EN. 
was purchased in around 2004. I taught myself to weld on this machine. I taught myself to weld by reading on the internet. A lot of machines come with a chart, right, that tell you where to set these dials, you know, for the wire speed and the amps uh, when you're welding, right, and what's, what size wire to use and all that. I was left to guess on most of that. Uh, and I, I, I read about some rules of thumb about how to figure this stuff out, and again, a lot of that is so long ago that I've forgotten most of it. There's no chart that came with this. On top of all that, I don't know how well you can see these dials on the front of this thing in the video, but they're not labeled in amps or feet per second or anything, right? My wire feed is 0 to 10. 0 to 10 watts, I don't know. Maybe that's feet per second, I don't know. I don't even have the manual for this thing anymore, so keep that in mind. The power is a three-stage toggle and a min and max switch. <laughs> so how do I know how many amps three max is? Uh, I don't know. Um, I believe the 180EN is the max output of the machine, so does that mean three is 180 amps? Three on max? And then what's two and one, and what's min and max? Is this half of that? I, I don't know. Um, I tried looking this up, I tried looking up the manual for it, and it doesn't make it clear what these settings do. So I'm left, again, to sort of guess what I'm trying to weld. And that's what I've been doing. Now, some of the critiques I've been getting on my welds are that they look cold. So today, my goal is to try to fiddle around with the wire speed and the power on the 3 16 steel that I used for my bumper, which is the same thing I have on the top of my Weldmate here. Remember the Weldmate project? I'll put a link if you want to watch me build this thing. This was a wooden top workmate and I turned it into a steel topped Weldmate, I'm calling it. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to hook this thing up and I'm going to fiddle around with the wire speed and the power and see if I can get a better looking weld on the same material I used on the bumper. And then, in future projects, I'll have more information to go from. So I'm going to try to take some notes, jot some stuff down in my good old long-term memory, and hopefully at the end of this I'll be able to make better welds with my good old machine. Here's what we're going to test on. First thing I'm going to do is make a weld at sort of where I think I would have done it without changing anything, right? So normally with, this is 316 steel, what I was doing was setting the machine to max, putting the power to, I believe, 2, and the wire speed around, what is it, 4 or 5, right? So we're going to give that a try. And then I'm going to try upping the power a little more, see what happens, right? And then we'll go from there. All right, folks, let's see how these things look. So this here is the first weld that I did. And I did that weld with the power dial set to number two, the min-max switch set to max, and the wire speed set to five. It went okay. So the goal here, maybe I'll come up with some pictures to superimpose here, but the goal of a weld in a joint like this is that the the weld part, so you got the right angle, right, and the weld kind of curves in the middle, right? It's supposed to join, sort of mend the two metals together. A cold weld will kind of lump on the surface, and I've got one of those here to show you. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit so you can see it when I get to it, but uh, a cold weld will kind of just like lump on top, right? So 
this doesn't look terrible cold, but it doesn't look like it had great penetration either. It doesn't have that sort of sloped inward look to it, or uh, I guess sloped inward is the wrong one. It should be at sort of like a 45 degree angle from my 90, right? There should be like a straight up and, not a straight up and down, but a, it should be like 90 degrees down this way and then like 45 degrees across the weld, right? This has a little bit of a lump to it. That could be because I moved too slow with the wire speed set where it was. It could be because the power wasn't high enough. So I personally think the power wasn't quite high enough on this weld. So on the next weld, which is this one, I set the power to 3, the switch to max, and I left the wire speed at 5. Now 5 is half of the wire speed that's on this welder. 3 is the highest power setting, and max, of course, is the highest setting for that switch. This weld actually, I think, looks pretty good. And again, I'll get a closer up shot of it to show you guys how it looks. Uh, but this one, you'll see it, is a, is a nice angle. You know, here's my 40, here's my 90, and then this is at sort of a 45 degree angle. Uh, I like the way this one came out. So I think for 3 16 steel, I should have this welder set to its max with a, with a 5 uh, wire speed, and I'll get this, this weld out of it. This next one I did right here. I took the, just this is more or less an experiment. I set the wire speed, I left the wire speed at 5, but I set the power down. And I thought, you know, we'll see, with a lower power setting, can I still get a decent weld out of this? And this ended up looking cold, and I'll show you. What you'll see is it's lumped outward, right? So it didn't penetrate into the metal weld. That's what a cold weld looks like. Uh, it kind of lumped out over top of the steel, and uh, it just doesn't have the same coverage. You can see that from where you're at, I'm sure. This has nice coverage across the whole weld. This doesn't. This just lumps out where it's like it was just kind of globbing on top of the steel, okay? Imagine welding like glue, right? This is like glue that just lobs on top of the whatever you're gluing, whereas something like this is more like a glue that actually mends, like melts into the material that you're working with. This will be a stronger weld than this. This may hold fine, right? I've got plenty of welds that look like this because, again, I'm a novice welder, and they hold up, but I wouldn't trust them like I would trust this weld here. This one here, I used the same three power setting, but I lowered the wire speed to see if moving slower got me an even nicer looking weld. And it kind of did, but it kind of didn't. And here, I did the same again, and I took a little more time. This one looks a little better. I still like this better than this or that. So this is not bad. I still, I still think this is the best setting for 316. And up here, as an experiment, I put the, the power... No, I kept the... I kept the power high, but I put the wire speed real slow, real low, to try to see what would happen. And you can see, it's horrible. Don't do that. Bad idea. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I've learned from all this, and I'm going to make one nice long bead on the back side of this joint, this test joint that I was doing. So, let me get set up. I didn't clean this side up as well as I should have because, well, I didn't think I was going to be welded on this side. But I'll do my best, and then we'll get a good weld on it. pretty as it could be, but I think I've got the heat down at the very least. The unevenness here was me being in a weird position for the camera, I think, and me learning to move more steadily as I weld. So there we go, folks. A little bit of trial and error never hurt anybody, right? So I wasted a bit of steel. Doesn't really matter. I think what I really needed was some practice, and I probably still need more. Uh, a lot of the unevenness of the weld that I just showed you was because of me uh, not moving the gun as steadily as I probably should have, uh, not keeping it on target like I should have, and that'll all come with more and more practice. I don't know how it looked in the camera, but looking at it in person, it really doesn't look terrible. I mean, there's spots that are a little bit pitted. There's no, or not pitted is the wrong word, there's gaps in the weld, which, which I don't love. Um, but it's 
solid toward the end, the lower end of it, I think I really got it pretty well. Again, this just comes with some practice. At the end of the day, I'm feeling like I'm doing better here, but what do you think? The welds that I did on the other side of this, where I showed you the side-by-side -side comparison, which one do you think came out best? I think the highest power setting with a wire speed of 5 was the right choice, and that's what I did on this side, where I did the longer weld to sort of practice with. Uh, I think now that I have the power down, working on my own movement is going to be relatively easy. It's just going to take some practice, going to take more and more welding, and I'm going to get more and more of that on the channel as things progress. Uh, I hope you learned something today. I think I did. I think I'm a better welder because of this video. I hope you are too. If you want to help support the channel, you should do so by, first of all, subscribing and liking this video. That helps me show up in search results for other folks. And you should head on over to swbcrawler.com. There's lots of ways you can either give via Patreon or purchase merchandise from the website. Hats, shirts, whatever. There's all kinds of stuff. I'm even trying my hand at yoga pants. If you've got a significant other that likes yoga pants, or if you yourself are a female watching my channel, thank you. There's like one of you, I think. Uh, check out the yoga pants that I now have up for sale. I've been playing around with some cool little designs because I too have a significant other who likes yoga pants and uh, I thought she might enjoy them and if other people like them then so be it. Alright folks, well thanks for watching and remember, get out there and wheel. I'll see you in the next one.